You've got a platform to call out the BS. The president's statements that day were BS. Saying, I mean, you know you were on the phone with him. While you were on the phone with him, I was getting the kicked out of me, almost losing my life. The way that he, you know, saying this is what happens when you steal an election. Go home. I love you. What the f is that? That came from the president of the United States. That is the voice of former D.C. Metro police officer Michael Fanone calling out House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy and Republicans in newly released audio from a 2020 meeting with McCarthy. Fanone, along with other officers and family, were meeting with the congressman to advocate for a bipartisan commission to investigate the attack on the Capitol. Republicans ultimately would block that prospect. Fanone secretly recorded the conversation which he reveals now in his new book titled Hold the Line, The Insurrection and One Cop's Battle for America's Soul. And Officer Fanone joins us now in studio. Congratulations on the book. It's great to see you. Uh, we were just saying we have to say up front again, thank you for what you and your fellow officers did that day, for, for standing in the breach, for holding the line on a truly ugly day for America. Um, why did you feel like you needed to record that conversation with Kevin McCarthy? Uh, I mean because I don't trust him. I didn't trust him to recount the uh, conversation accurately. Um, and, you know, I wanted to, uh, to memorialize it so that um, in the case that, uh, you know, he said something that was different, either from what he was saying publicly, or he said something in the meeting that was, you know, different from what he had told other people, um, that I would have, uh, you know, some type of evidence to, uh, to prove that. And Kevin McCarthy, obviously, we saw in an excerpt from a new book this week, he knew exactly what happened that day, yelling on the phone to Donald Trump himself, saying they're trying to kill me, yelling to the president. What do you think when you hear publicly things that are so different from what you know these guys know happened that day? Ron Johnson, the senator from Wisconsin last week, was speaking to a group in Milwaukee. He kept putting armed insurrection in air quotes, saying they didn't have guns. It wasn't an armed insurrection. They stayed inside the rope lines. You were there. You can recount what happened to you if you want to. What do you think when you hear that from these people? Well, I mean, in, in the case of Senator Ron Johnson, uh, I mean, we were talking about this earlier. Uh, you know, he's adhering to the playbook of if I continue to repeat the same lies over and over again, knowing full well that most of my constituents only source their news from Fox News, which is not saying anything about the realities of January 6th, then I can get away with those lies. It's been debunked many, many times over. There were guns present on January 6th. There were many firearms present on January 6th. There were not a lot of firearms arrests made because the officers were too busy fighting for their lives. Uh, but we have proof positive that there were individuals uh, there that day that were armed. And we did make arrests regar uh, you know, with regards to firearms and people illegally carrying them uh, within the city limits. So, Officer Fanon, let me first echo Willie's comments about thanking you for your service that day. Uh, two things. First, just give us an update on, on your health, your recovery now, because I know you suffered inj significant injuries that day. Uh, but also walk us through, in those hours, the danger you, you and your fellow officers faced, but also the restraint that you showed as that mob approached. I mean, as far as my uh, physical health, uh, I mean, I had a lot of um, great doctors that I worked with for over a year. Um, with regard to the trauma of the day, uh, you know, psychologically, I've uh, I've come to terms with uh, with what I experienced that day, and I'm very proud of the way that I performed and the way that uh, you know many of the other officers that responded to the Capitol that day performed. Um, I'm sorry, what was the other question? Sure, just the, the restraint that you showed. I mean, obviously in great danger, but. As, as terrible as that moment was, it could have spiraled that much more out of control. Yeah, I mean, again, I think it speaks to the uh, individual officers that responded to the Capitol that day. You know, the protocol that dictates how police officers use force is very specific, uh, especially when we're talking about deadly force. And while, you know, in my case, being out in the crowd, being assaulted, there were individuals that I identified um, in which I believe I was justified to use deadly force because I felt my life was in danger. Uh, that being said, in a crowd scenario, uh, had I used my firearm, you know, there's a good chance that I would have struck other people that may have been breaking the law, but may have not risen to the level of um, 
deadly force being appropriate. And so I chose, you know, to use another tactic, uh, as did many, many other officers. You know, this we don't have the ability to just shoot openly into, um, you know, into a crowd because we feel like we're under attack. I want to point out, too, for people like Ron Johnson who equivocate and say, well, it wasn't armed, it wasn't technically an insurrection. Well, somehow you got burns, a heart attack, traumatic brain injury, electric shock to your neck, beaten with a flagpole, dragged by a mob down the Capitol, step beaten with pipe, stunned with a taser, and threatened with your own gun. Um, all of those things did happen. Were you wondering, Officer Fanon, in the moment, where's the cavalry, where's the backup? There's been so much talk about why the National Guard wasn't deployed quicker and, and where was everybody? And we've learned a lot in these January 6 hearings about what President Trump, former President Trump, did not do. Uh, were you looking over your shoulder saying, where is everybody, where's the backup? I mean, not in the moment. Um, I, and I do remember a, a brief period of time when I originally got into the tunnel, there was, uh, you know, one of the officers, you know, kind of looked at me as though, uh, you know, like, where's everybody else? And this is when my partner, Jimmy, and, uh, Jimmy Albright and I arrived. And I was like, well, it's, it's just the, the two of us. Um, you know, that's it. But, you know, that being said, in, in hindsight, looking back and, you know, hearing through the, uh, you know, select committee's investigation that, you know, there were changes in protocol made to calling out the National Guard in the weeks and months just prior to January 6th. I mean, that's what we in the business call a clue. Um, and then the fact that, you know, Donald Trump sat for 187 minutes and didn't do shit while hundreds of police officers were fighting for their lives on the Capitol steps. And we now know that he was watching uh, intently uh, throughout that entire period. And then, you know, combined with the statement that he eventually put out, um, which to me was absolutely infuriating. I mean, everyone knows that that was a disingenuous statement at best. Uh, you know, we love you, go home. This is what happens when you steal an election. I and mean, it's bullshit. And as you write in your book, John, he had to have his arm twisted even to make that statement publicly. Yeah, uh, he multiple times. The, it was it was senior aides. Even oh, his, own, his own daughter tried to say, you know, Mr. President, you need to say something here. And even when he went out to the Rose Garden, it took three or four takes before he was able to even offer a mild condemnation of what was happening here, and, and you should go. So, I mean, learning this now, yeah, I'm sure you've been following the January 6th hearings. We've got another one tomorrow. Do you feel like they have done a good job really telling the American people what went into that day and what happened that day? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I wish that there had been a, um, a bipartisan commission. I think that would have been the appropriate uh, mechanism to investigate this. However, uh, Kevin McCarthy and Republicans shot that down. Um, so the select committee, I think, has done, you know, outstanding job investigating the root causes of January 6th uh, and placing them before the American people in a format that was uh, palatable, that people could understand. And to me, it was very clear at the end uh, that you know, Donald Trump engaged in uh, defrauding the American people, uh, lying to them about, you know, the election, uh, 2020 election, and at having not been a free and fair election. Uh, and I think he needs to be held accountable. Let's listen to one more piece of the audio from that meeting with Republican lawmakers. This is the mother of Officer Brian Sicknick, who died later, asking Congressman McCarthy about what former President Trump was doing while her son was being attacked at the Capitol. He's watching television. He's watching it with his family. I mean, what the hell kind of man is this? Um, I'm sorry. When I, when I called him, he wasn't watching TV. He wasn't with his family. He knew what was going on. He knew they were fighting for hours and hours and hours. I'm just telling you from my phone call, I don't know that he did know that at that point. Kevin McCarthy running interference there, for former President Trump to the mother of, of an officer who died later. Um, have any of these Republicans privately reached out to you? Has anyone apologized to you, checked in on you? Do you get any of that from any members of Congress? No. Uh, with the exception of a few that I've uh, made friends with, Adam Kinzinger, Eric Swalwell, um, no. Uh, I mean, I... And that was another part of this experience, and specifically the meeting that I had with Kevin McCarthy, is seeing the indifference on behalf of um, Republican members of Congress, but, but in many cases, Democrat members of Congress, too. 
uh, in which they saw, you know, January 6th as either a distraction from their legislative agenda, uh, not politically um, advantageous. And, and in this case, you know, you have the mother of a fallen police officer, a police officer that died as a result of the injuries that he sustained on January 6th, fighting in defense of the Capitol uh, and in defense of democracy. And, you know, Kevin McCarthy just could not uh, muster up any empathy or compassion for this woman whatsoever. Back the blue when it's convenient in the case of them, except when cops are being beaten on the steps of the Capitol. It's so important to tell your story. It's so important to tell the story of what happened that day because there are so many people who want to change the story. Metro DC officer Michael Fanone, the book is titled Hold the Line, the Insurrection, Insurrection in One Cop's Battle for America's Soul. Officer Fanone, thank you again for being here. Thank you. And thank you for your service. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it.